Hello everybody out there, this is Patrick Valentine. You are listening to the Talent WPC LP 105.3 FM in Orange. And I am happy today to have an honored guest by Grace <laughs> here today on my show today. How are you doing, Grace, today? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I am doing very awesome. Good. And we are here to, today to talk about the Sundance Film Festival a film festival we recently went to in Utah, Park, in Park City, Utah. Beautiful place. Very beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Never seen so much snow. So much snow all the time. So, um, Grace, I, what were you hoping, like, before you came to the festival? Like, were you hoping to get any good tips if you ever wanted to make a good movie? Um, I'm not exactly interested in making films myself but um it was just i love movies and obviously it's a great opportunity to see independent films at such a good um festival so i was just excited about just seeing movies <laughs> all the time what was your favorite movie that you watched um definitely for a good time call was the funniest movie i've ever seen and I can't even like describe how hard I was laughing. It was like almost embarrassing. What in the and what surprised you in the movie that actually made you um that really caught your attention? Um, I think how they used the character, the main two characters' relationship. It was there are always movies about like bromances and like guys having that like sort of weirdly romantic friendship. And you don't really see that a lot with female characters, so they really um, introduce that to the industry, I believe. And it'll definitely be bought by a major production company, so everyone will get to see that play out. What was um, the one movie that you did not like the most? Um, I know everyone's going to say the comedy, so I'll <laughs> just like save people from hearing that again and go with Bestier. Um, I can't even... I don't even... I have no words. It was awful. Awful. It, that's all you could describe of it? Um, I mean, I'm sure there are, like, very intelligent things to be said about it. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about filmmaking to identify them because I thought it was terrible. All right. <laughs> and for the Sundance Film Festival, what was your favorite part about it? Um, besides seeing all those fantastic movies, it was definitely like going out with the group, um, like for dinner and at night and stuff, just because, um, we all bonded pretty easily and it was just like a funny dynamic between everyone. Yeah, it was pretty Especially us honey buns. Oh, yes. <laughs> it was interesting, I have to say. Um, if you had to do the festival again... Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to try and go back. I think it's an amazing opportunity, and if anyone is able to go, they should just jump on that plane because it's truly amazing. It was a pretty fun experience. I'm glad we all like bonded. First semester, we didn't really know much about each other, and then we just started, knew we were going to start bonding like as soon as we did the ticket stuff. Yeah, I think definitely... like. As soon as we all got together as a group, like, out of class, it was just working as a group. It was good. All right. So that will do it for the show. This is Patrick Valentine signing off with Grace. Thank Bye. you. And have a nice day. Love Bye. you. Bye. Hi everyone out there, this is Pat Valentine, um, you're listening to radio station WFPC LP 105.3 FM Ringe. I'm here today with Mariama talking about Sundance and how the festival went. How are you today, Mariama? I'm doing lovely. How are you, Pat? Very awesome on this fine, very fine Friday. It's a brisk one. Oh, and very cold, like. So, um. I have on a skirt. Phew. God, that's not good. Yeah. So, um, we just went on a, um, 
mini vacation, we just say, to um, the Sundance Film Festival. And um, we had a pretty rocking time. So what were you thinking when you, before you got to the festival? Like, what do you think you were going to get out of it? Well, it was definitely highly anticipated in my brain. Um, I was very excited to be going. Uh, I knew that while prepping for this festival, like there was a lot of stuff to do, but once we got there, it'd be like really chill and we wouldn't really have to worry other than seeing films and relaxing. So for, um, the films, obviously we had to see which one was by far your favorite. My favorite had to be hands down. And I'm sure a lot of other people will agree for a good time call. Hilarious. One of the funniest films, if not funniest film I've ever seen. What was it about? Um, it was about these frenemies from college that uh, happened to live together in one of the girls' dead grandmother's apartment, and they start a, a business together. I don't want to give too much away because I'm sure that it'll be coming out, but they start a business together, and you just go through their relationship and their friendship. Uh, it gets built throughout the film, and it's just a twisted, hilarious, like, rolling on the floor laughing film. Any good... um film elements they use like during the movie i'm not a film major so i'm sorry i couldn't really uh, oh, okay. tell you um any movie that you thought was just really bad and just not yes good? the comedy oh awful uh, there were two really bad films but the comedy like had absolutely it was trying to be funny and it was absolutely awful like i can understand if uh you know you're trying to be serious, like, that's chill. But they were trying to be funny, and it was the most not funny film I've ever seen. Oh, it was I, offensive in every way possible. I think we'll remember that when our professor just left five yeah. minutes. <laughs> People were getting up out of the film. That should speak for itself. Um, how do you think, and what was your overall, and what was your best point of the film festival that you liked the most that you'll never forget? Um, I guess just getting to know everyone and, you know, going out to eat and, like, visiting Park City, obviously viewing Park City with our eyeballs, like, that was amazing. Like, the Sundance Resort was, oh my god, unreal. Um, I would love to go back. I, I really did have a great time and getting to know everyone in the group and, you know, just a little break before getting back to school was great. I just thought it was funny that um we spent, like, time in class together like for the past few months, but not enough to actually know each other that well. But then... Do you really know anyone that well? Do you? <laughs> not, well, not in class, but I felt like we knew a lot about each other like throughout the whole trip. It was pretty funny. Yes. Um, so if you had a chance to do Sundance again, would you do it? Oh, hands down, yes. Just hopefully not worth... Ain't, um, not pay the $3,000? <laughs> yeah, like, I think it'd be cheaper maybe to go as a volunteer or something, so. Do you think it was worth every penny that you spent? Yes. No regrets. Ever. Uh, all right. So that'll do it. This is Patrick Ballantyne, and you're listening to The Talon. This is Pat and Mariama signing off, and Yay. have a great, great day. Bye. Great Bye. day. Bye. All right, hello everybody out here. This is Pat Ballantyne here. You're listening to The Talon, and we are here today interviewing Lydia from my class from the Sundance Film Festival that we just went to. Lydia, say hi to the folks. Hi. Hi, so um, we just went on a week vacation, let's just say, to this um, festival called the Sundance Film Festival in Park City, Utah. What were you really um, hoping to see like once you got out there in Utah? Well, I'd never really been out west before, so I was really excited to see the mountains and everything out there. Um, I was really excited to see some celebrities too, um, and a bunch of movies I really had high on my list with Chris Rock and with Common. I was really excited to see those. Yep. Um, which um, movie were you actually like fond of the most that you got to see? Um, it. <clears throat> Be Between Love and Two Days in New York. Uh, they're both completely different, though. Love was super serious, and Two Days in New York was a comedy. So I can't really pick between the two of them because they're so different. But those are definitely my two favorite ones. Which one about um, Two Days in New York did you actually like that, that made you get really um, 
happy about. Wait, what do you mean? And like, um, that you really liked about the film. Um, I liked how, I liked the French dad a lot, I think, the most. Um, I liked how they had, a like, the foreign people in the film, and they had subtitles and stuff. I added, like, something else to the comedy. And, um, what about the movie Love that you also liked? Uh, that one was just really emotional and pretty serious, so I thought that, um, my favorite part was definitely the little boy. I thought he was extremely talented, and I thought he was adorable. I think he did a really good job in the movie. But, um, out of the movies that you saw, like, which one was the one that you just really did not like at all? Uh, probably the last movie that we went to see. Uh, it was called The Comedy. It was not a comedy. It was really terrible and long, and I actually fell asleep a few times in it. Uh, I thought the acting wasn't good, there was no plot, and it was just pretty vulgar. Yeah, I got to see that well. I think I was not too fond of that film either. Not, not even our professor no. sat through the yeah. whole thing. Um, what was the most exciting thing you got to do when you were at this festival? Um, I think the most exciting thing was going to Main Street about every other night and going out to eat in all these different restaurants. I thought that... Uh, just like viewing the city was the most exciting. If um, you got to do Sundance again, would you so get to do it again? Yeah, I would love to do Sundance again. I'm going to see if I can actually go back next year or something with a friend. I know that other people on the trip have also been looking into potentially going back. So I think that that would definitely be something in the future for me. Yeah, you're not the only one that wants to go. Pretty much everyone else that I interviewed wants to go back again. So I'm not surprised. <laughs> yep, I'm not surprised either. And that will do it. This is Pat Valentine with Lydia. You are listening to the talent WPC LP 105.3 FM and Range. Thank you and have a great day. Okay. Let's see how this... Hi everybody out there. This is Pat Valentine and you are listening to the Pat Valentine Show here on the Talon. We're here today on a very beautiful Wednesday afternoon, February 16th, and um, I'm here today with Chloe, and we're here to talk about the Sundance Film Festival and what the experience was like there since we took a class together. So Chloe, um, want to talk about um, what were you expecting from the Sundance Film Festival? Well, I guess I was expecting to see a lot of very different and interesting movies as compared to like what would you really find like being played at like big movie theaters so I was expecting a lot of like artsy independent type of films and I definitely watched a lot that were very very out there any ones where you thought you liked the most yeah um actually I definitely had like a top three and they I guess you can definitely, you would find them like in a big theater eventually, like the, a studio is definitely going to buy these three films. Um, but when it came to like the artsy independent films, I couldn't really relate to them or I didn't really find them that interesting, kind of find them a little bit off color. Mm -hmm. And on which one was your favorite that you had to say? Oh man, that's kind of hard. Uh, can I do a top three? All right. <laughs> okay. So my top three were for a good time call which was about um, a sex phone line. It's actually very, very interesting and so funny. And then the other one would be Red Lights, which is um, a paranormal psychic type of thriller and definitely had me on the edge of my seat and I jumped a couple times. Is that like very, very like jumpy and uppity and whatever. And then the third one would be, um, what's it called? Oh, L-U-V. And it was a story about like a young boy who's um, taken for a day out with his uncle and he learns a lot of very bad things he didn't know about. But it was a very, very emotional and dramatic movie and it was, it's so good. I can't wait to see it again. And then um, since you had the movies that you liked, which one was the one where you just didn't like it the most, where you just wanted to walk out? <laughs> there was two. There was this one movie, 
that I don't even know, I can't even remember the name of because it was that bad, but it was just basically about like what happens to you when you're old and you don't know anyone, like all your family's dead and they take you throughout like a couple of weeks of like what happens to someone after they die and it was really depressing, it was in black and white, it just, and it was so boring, I, I was honestly, like me, Grace and Bobby wanted to leave and we ended up staying, but we should have. And then the other one was actually at the Sundance Resort. It was called The Comedy. And you would think that like something at such a nice place would have been, it wouldn't have been so like raunchy, but it was extremely raunchy and didn't even have any plot line, didn't make any sense like why any of the things that were happening happened. Oh, yeah, pretty <laughs> much um, everyone didn't like that on film, to be honest. <laughs> no, um, not at all. So if you got a chance to do Sundance again, would you definitely go there? Definitely. I'd love to go next year, but I'm going to be still in school, so I'm probably going to wait till I'm graduated. Maybe go like the year after I graduate. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And this is Pat Valentine with Chloe. I'm signing off. Thank you for tuning in and have a nice day. All right, this is Patrick Ballantyne here, and you are listening to The Talon. We're here on a gorgeous afternoon here at Franklin Pierce University. And today's date is the 15th of February. I'm here joined by Nick, and we are here to talk about the Sundance Film Festival we just went to. Hi, Nick. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Pat. How are you doing? Good. Um, we had um, some good experience at the Sundance Film Festival, and... Um, I was hoping you kind of talk about some of the movies that we've seen. Like, um, before you came to Sundance, what were you actually expecting to get out of the film festival? Um, I was really expecting to gain a better understanding of what an independent film really was. I'd seen a few Sundance, uh, you know, films that had the Sundance stamp on them before, but I never really understood the real difference, and now I think I really have a better understanding of it. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the best movie that you saw while going to Sundance? Um, it would have to be a tie between uh, Love or L-U-V, whatever you want to call it, and uh, For a Good Time Call. Those are my two favorite movies. I really couldn't pick between them. Um, what did you think was so interesting about Love? Um, it was really, really well made. If you were, if you didn't know any better, you'd think it was, you know, made by a professional, you know, company with a with a lot of big budget to back them up and it was really just a well done movie and didn't it didn't have those things that I just mentioned so it was impressive that they managed to make him such an amazing movie with all of that any um elements that you thought were pretty interesting in that movie um the child talent which he was a big part of the movie was just randomly found it wasn't he wasn't like a child actor it was just like a almost a random pickup off the street so I thought that was pretty cool and um, what about for the movie For a Good Time Call? Um, that movie I really enjoyed. And then afterwards during the Q&A, they mentioned that they shot the whole movie in 15 days, which was just stunning because it was such a well put together and well made movie. And you would think like a movie would at least be made for, I don't know, at least 30 days or more. Yeah, most movies that are that well made tend to take a long time to produce, but they said that it was a total of 15 days, which encompassed every single aspect of the movie. And um, so out of the best movies you saw, which one was the least interesting movie? Um, I would have to say the comedy was yeah. the, uh, the least favorite of mine. It was far too vulgar and in your face. And it, it really, it tried to be funny and there were a couple of funny parts, but it really just fell flat on its face. Yeah, I'm pretty much out of the whole, whole group. Um, everybody says that movie was the worst. Absolutely. Um, if you got a chance to do Sundance again and the Sundance Film Festival, would you get to do it again? Absolutely. I'm actually looking at going with some friends and family next year. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to being able to go back, maybe. Yeah, pretty much the whole group wants to go back again because it was just that great. Um, and... Um, that will be it. This is Pat Valentine, and you're listening to the Pat Valentine Show here with Nick. Um, as we talked about Sundance, thank you, and have a great day. Hi, everybody out there. This is Pat Valentine, and you're listening to the Pat Valentine Show. 
We're here today on a gorgeous Wednesday with Professor Wood, and um, we recently went to the Sundance Film Festival, and everybody had a great experience. I just feel like um, having her to talk about it would be pretty awesome because she has been going to the Sundance Film Festival for and Sundance Film Festival for how long? First question up the up the bat, huh? Yep. Um, <laughs> let's see. Probably since 1999. Wow. Um, not every year, but almost every year. So, like, um, for this year, you've probably seen a lot more movies than, well, throughout more than the whole entire group because. Whenever we were at our hotel, you were like gone going to movies because you were had a more of an interest than we did. Oh, I don't know if I have more of an interest than you did, but I had um, I was covering the festival for the Nashua Telegraph, so I was also a member of the press. So um, you know, I didn't um, have I didn't purchase any tickets with our purchase when we purchased tickets for the group. Um, but I was able to uh, get press tickets and um, I probably saw just about as many films as most of you. I, saw, I probably saw 13 or 14 films, not that many more than you. Um, I did sit in on some films that I didn't have time to see the complete film, but enough so that I got a sense of the quality of the films or um, where they were uh, going with it content wise. And um, for so far out of all the years you came to Sundance, which one was your favorite and Ooh. favorite movie? And then also obviously put that into this year's as well. That's a really tough question as always. Um, the film that always comes to mind when someone asks me about my favorite Sundance film uh, has to be uh, Whale Rider, which was several years ago. It was my first experience of being in the Eccles Theater, which is the, the really big 1,200-seat uh, yep. movie theater. Really nice um, theater. Really great theater, huge screen, and um, it, the film got a standing ovation, and uh, it was, I guess because it was a moving, um, a coming of age film about a young uh, New Zealand girl who uh, was striving to become the leader of her um, Maori uh, culture uh, and girls were not allowed to take that position. Um, she had a great family struggle with her grandfather and um, the end of which I will not uh, reveal but um, it was it was a thrilling movie to watch it was emotionally rich and character driven and extremely colorful and the audience just jumped up on their feet with appreciation and applause so I think that would be my favorite uh, this year? Pretty tricky, isn't it? <laughs> um, I really felt that um, the documentary films that I saw this year were, on the whole, stronger than the uh, narrative feature films. Um, Which documentary did you think that was like the best I pointed out, and that, not point out to you, that you had a good like vibe for? Uh-huh. Um, I think the most impactful emotionally would be uh, The Invisible War. Yep. You saw that too, Pat, didn't Me you? Me and Nick um, saw that film actually, and um, yep. it was amazing how, it, I forgot what award it got, but it had to do some with being like the best documentary. I think it might have gotten the audience award. It was a pretty interesting yes. film. Yes, and I think it was due to uh, the telling of five or so personal stories that you really you went with these women and and one man actually um, to a lesser degree they followed him but the stories were 
it's so shocking the numbers, the the statistics of women being violated. It just got you like, wow, that that's crazy. It was shocking. I mean, we know that it's been an issue in the media for a while. It's been something that's been focused on. But to really, you know, when you hear somebody's personal story, it really, it changes your relationship with the information and you feel for that person. And I just like, um, thought it was ridiculous how the government is paying these people to be, get trained to be in the army. Then the guys just do that stupid thing and then boom, it ruins the life of an in individual. We saw how lives were ruined and totally covered up by the military establishment, which, you know, is just unacceptable, appalling. And also we see the power of film in that y you knew that uh, in yeah. the audience, there was a couple in the audience who came forth and was so horrified that the military did not take responsibility for helping this woman out with her medical costs. Yeah. Her jaw was broken, this one woman. Yep. And somebody came, this couple came forth and offered $60,000 to help pay her medical expenses, which is, without the film, you know, it was a miracle. She, she, it, it never would have happened. And um, that, um, I know which woman you're talking about, and um, that actually was like the most shocking one, in my opinion, because, um, she had all these medications. The pills, right? Yes. That image. It was like a drugstore. Right? She had maybe 50 bottles of medication on the counter that she took out to describe to the documentarians. And she had done research on it, wise woman that she yeah. was, and discovered that other people had died from combinations that she was prescribed to take. And, you know, she, she caught it before anything could happen to her, so. Yeah. It was interesting. It was powerful. The other one that I saw that yeah. I really liked that um, was a, a, a skateboarding film yeah. by uh, Stacy Peralta, who's had other films, at least one other film in the festival years ago. Um, and it was also totally engaging in a whole different way. Uh, you know, so it was a sports... I so wanted to video. see that. Yeah, it was absolutely wonderful. It wasn't on my list of films to see, but I had uh, empty s space in my schedule, and they were showing it at the uh, press screenings, and so I just sat in on it, and I was totally captivated, yeah. And, um, well, now we said your most favorite films. Which ones were you not weren't so happy with? Yes, well, we all know the one we all... Yep. <laughs> um, if you read my article in the Telegraph, yep. I mentioned that we, <clears throat> I actually walked out of this film. I walked, I walked out of two films, um, this festival. I'm, I'm easy to walk out of films if I'm not hooked in the first ten minutes, yep. or if I'm disgusted. I'm, I have no pride in leaving. Yep. And uh, that film that we all went to see up at the resort, the comedy was <laughs> just. You know, gross was the operative word. Yep. And That's what everybody's word is describing. I know. <sighs> I know. So I had, I had the luxury of walking out on that one. But uh, the other one that I actually walked out on, which surprised and so disappointed me, was uh, Lay the Favorite with Bruce Willis. Did you see that one? No, didn't I didn't. You did see it? I was so disappointed. The acting, well... As always, as usual, I should say, it's the problem with any film is most often in the script. And the roles that were created for Bruce Willis and, um, oh, I'm blacking on her name, uh, the other, the lead actress, whose name perhaps I will remember, uh, Rebecca Hall. She is a, br a brilliant actress. Um, Bruce Willis, I think, comes you know his forte is action adventure and his his aliveness and his um humor is always so wonderful his personality that comes forth and in this role that he played he was so flat the role was flat and rebecca hall was you know she didn't stop twirling her hair i was gonna scream it, it was just a really out of character character for her which i'm sure she took because it was a stretch for her, but it just didn't work, and I just I I put in forty five minutes on that film. I gave it forty five, and I couldn't bear it anymore, and I left. All right, and well, 
I can't ask you this because you're going to obviously do this again, but um, I'm guessing even though if you retire from being a professor here, are you going to definitely be going to Sundance again? I hope so, yeah. Um, I uh, have an amazing time every year I go, and it's really exciting to be a member of the press, and hopefully if I can continue to... Um, get press credentials and, and uh, have the opportunity to interview people and uh, photograph talent. Uh, it's, you know, it makes the festival even richer than um, just seeing the films. So I hope so. It's, I also hope that I uh, expand into other festivals. I've, I've been to Cannes once and I would love to go back again, but I, I've never been to Toronto, um, which is another big festival in Berlin. Um, love to expand my horizons in that way. Oh, well that was interesting. And um, this is Pat Valentine and Professor Wood signing off and thanks, have a great day.